And part two, we are back. And I'm going to talk about UFC 180. Cain Velasquez, the UFC heavyweight champion versus Fabricio Verdum, the challenger. The two of them are going to be coaching tough in Latin America, South America. And I am very, very excited for this fight because I'm a huge fan of Cain Velasquez. Anytime you tell me he's fighting, I'm going to make it a mission to go and see that fight. Whether it's at tea, here at home or in the pub or something, I will make it a point to go and see the fight. Because I just love the way that guy fights. And to me, there are so many other fighters out there that don't really put on a show or make it a fight. And Cain Velasquez makes it a fight and it's very entertaining for me to watch. And he's very impressive. He's a heavyweight with just amazing cardio. His striking is very good for a guy that's a wrestler. He is an absolute warrior. An absolute Mexican Superman warrior. That's what I'm going to call him. The, the Mexican Superman. And he, we have seen what he's done throughout his career. He um, destroyed Brock Lesnar. He unfortunately lost to Junior De Santos in the first round. He got clipped with a good one. He then came back and destroyed, I mean, absolutely massacred Bigfoot Silver. I mean, it was like watching a horror film. It was like watching Carrie, but with UFC fighters. Blood everywhere. Comes back in the rematch with Junior De Santos and absolutely destroys that guy. Uh, we then see him in there. Well, we saw what he did to Minotaur and Oguero back in the day, knocked him out. Uh, he then has a rematch with Bigfoot Silva, clips him out in the first round, destroys Junior De Santos again, uh, goes in there, and now he's going to be facing Fabricio Verdum. And this is a very, very intriguing fight. And when I think about what could happen and what could take place, it hits me with one point and it makes me pose one question that I want to say to everybody you, the YouTube viewer, you, the MMA fan, you, the casual UFC fan. Anyone watching this that has some awareness of the two fighters, will Fabricio Verdum, and you look through his history, will Fabricio Verdum shock the world again? And I say again because many, many years ago he was in a fight that reminds me of this fight right now, where he goes in there against an unstoppable juggernaut of a heavyweight. Many years ago it was Fedor Emelianenko. Fedor was arguably touted as the best heavyweight in the world. To many people, he's the best pound for pound fighter in the world. This guy was a legend. He had an untouchable aura. He was a killer. Nobody could stop him. The Doom and Fedor signed to fight. Many people saw this as a formality that Fedor was going to win. Fedor was going to steamroll through him, and then we'd have more talk about him and over him. And then what happened? Fedor and the Doom fight. Fedor knocks him down, he gets inside his guard, Fadoom submits him and shocks the entire world. Nobody saw that coming. Well, maybe a few people did, but to be honest, the majority did not see that coming and it shocked the entire world. And it made everybody think about what they just saw. And a lot of people say, well, for real, you know, lucky for real, yeah, he's alright, he's alright. But when you look at it, to be honest, the only knock I've got on Fadoom is inconsistency. But when you look at some of the guys he's fought, he's beaten some good guys. He beat Bigfoot Silver, I believe. Uh, actually, I'm sure he beat Bigfoot Silver. I could be wrong. He's beaten Graber El Gonzaga uh, back in when Gonzaga was a killer. He beat um, Alistair Overeem. He beat um, Noguera by submission. He completely mashed up Roy Nelson's face uh, in February 2012. He had a first round knockout in the first minute against Mike Russo, though that's just like a you know a gimme fight, but still he knocked him out in the first round so quickly. He went out there and then he fought um God, what was the other guy's name? Travis Brown and completely destroyed Travis Brown, completely battered Travis Brown. And that shocked a lot of people because everyone thought that on the feet Travis Brown would be the guy that wins because of his knockout power. The fact that he knocked out over him and he knocked out Josh Barnett, he was on a hot streak, and Vadum just beat him with stand-up, completely beat him with stand-up, and that's the thing, he keeps kind of shocking and surprising people, we don't see enough of him, but when he's out there, he's really out there, and we already know about his world-class grappling skills, and I don't say that term loosely, he has world-class grappling skills, that's, that's, that's well known, we've also seen this improvement in his striking, his striking has become so much better, as I've said what he did to Roy Nelson, was a great example the knockout on Mike Russo even in the Alistair Overeem rematch at Strike Force even though he didn't win you could see his stand up had gotten a lot better he looked so much more comfortable on his feet 
and he's gotten even better since then. He's gone in there with uh, who, who's that fucking guy's name? Yeah, I mean, all the fights he's had uh, when we've seen him use his stand up, his stand up has become something. He's not a one dimensional fighter that just relies on the ground game. He's got several dimensions, and now he's got the stand up, the Muay Thai stand up that he's been using under Rafael Cordero, and he's just become so much better as a fighter. And it makes me very intrigued because on paper, at times, I would think that. Cain Velasquez, who I'm a fan of, would just steamroll through the Doom. But given the improvement of the Doom and given what he is capable of, given the fact that we saw him submit Fedora Milenko and shocked everybody, I want to know and I want to ask this question to everybody out there. Wolfwood B. Shelver Doom walk out of the UFC with the UFC heavyweight title. Is he going to be the guy that beats Cain Velasquez? Granted, Cain has been beaten by Junior. But this current Cain Velasquez, is he going to beat him? Now on the other side of it, how does Cain Velasquez deal with him? Cain Velasquez is going to use a lot of powerful punch and kick combinations, which he's very capable of. Capable of. He's got great low kicks to the leg. I can imagine he's going to utilize that a lot. I can imagine he's going to try and make it a cardio battle as well and wear out the doom. I don't know how much of his wrestling he's going to use. I think wrestling can be a good nullifier of jiu-jitsu if you know how to do it properly. Obviously, Cain Velasquez does know how to do that properly. Although we never really saw him take it to the ground with a guy like Antino no, Noguera. He kept that fight standing up, which probably was a smarter move in the um, in the long run. But is he going to utilize his wrestling? I wouldn't be surprised if he does. He's going to try and kind of keep him up by the wall. Maybe take him down, have him in half guard. You know, kind of not give the Doom a lot of space and try and do stuff. But that's going to be a very hard person to do it. To, to do that to if he does pull that off I would be so impressed if he pulls that off I would be very impressed if he can outclass him on the ground I would be blown away we have seen in many other fights where that has happened I remember Damian Maya I swear he fought Mark Munoz and Munoz used a style of wrestling where he was able to nullify uh, Maya's jiu-jitsu so that could be something we could see there um, the one th other thing I want to say though before I wrap this up is that one thing that makes me nervous for Cain Velasquez is this He's always injured. He's always injured, and that worries me because he's going to put miles on his body, tons of miles on his body. And as a fan of his, I will say this he's always having shoulder injuries or knee injuries. And when you see how he trains him and Daniel Cormier, I mean, they don't. You can see the footage on YouTube. They don't hold back. Those guys go full pelt like absolute animals. If you've watched the documentary about that camp, you will see what I mean. These guys are knocking each other out and injuring each other all the time. And that does worry me because if Velasquez keeps doing that, he's going to push his body past a certain point and he's going to be past his prime quicker than he should be. And that does concern me. So long as he can... I know he's just had a shoulder surgery, I think. I think he's just had a shoulder surgery coming off an injury. But that worries me because if he's training like that and he's injuring himself to that extent... For Brice over Doom, it's going to be easy pickings for him. And that's the other thing that worries me. But if we're going to say it now, both guys at 100%, who do I think is going to win? Who do I favour in the fight? I would favour Cain Velasquez in this fight. But don't be surprised if Fabrice over Doom shocks the world. And that's what I want to ask everybody right now, and I've asked you for the third time. Does the Doom shock the world? Does he beat Cain Velasquez? Does Fabricio Verdum become the UFC heavyweight champion? What do you think of Fabricio Verdum as a fighter by on his own? Do you rate Fabricio Verdum? Are you excited for this fight? What do you think about the entire heavyweight division right now? It seems like there's um, a bit of a gap at the moment. Although we've got Velasquez and Verdum, Junior, I don't think he's ever going to fight Kane, considering what happened in the last two fights. Josh Barnett, we don't know what's going to be happening with him at the moment. Uh, so it's, it's some interesting things. Maybe John Jones eventually goes up to heavyweight. Who knows? But I want to know right now what do you think is going to happen. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to do another video, but it's just going to be a silly one. So if you want to watch it, you can. Uh, I am out. Take care. Peace and all the best.